Hello. In this series of videos, I want to walk you through a project that I've been having a ton of fun with since really, I guess, early July 2025. And uh, the project has to do with getting better sound out of my Rune system. So who is this project for? It's for Rune subscribers. Well, so Rune Labs uh, makes a metadata subscription and music playing software. So if you're a Rune subscriber, this might be of interest to you. And it's also for people who have an external USB DAC that they want to feed music from their Rune service into. And you need some kind of bridge device. Now you can connect a USB DAC directly to the computer that's running Rune, but um, that's really just for kind of making sure that everything works to get the best sound out of Rune. Rune Labs themselves and pretty much everybody that I've talked to recommends using a, an endpoint device, some kind of network device that isn't your Rune server to listen to your music. Uh, so you need kind of uh, several components in order for this to make sense for you for this project. Uh, you need to have a Rune subscription, you need to have a USB DAC, you need to be interested in, in connecting some device on the network to feed the data to your DAC, and then you need some kind of control surface like a tablet or a smartphone. Um, and so if you've done all of that and you're not quite satisfied with the sound of Rune, but you enjoy the functionality of it, this project I think is something that you would be interested in. So let me show you really quickly what it looks like over here. So uh, essentially we have a couple of Raspberry Pis. These are in Argon 40 cases. So Argon is a third party company that makes a case for a Raspberry Pi. I like the case because it puts the all the connections on the back. So it's a little bit nicer. Um, the, the cases do have fans, but the cases are also passively cooled. You can turn the fans off. There is enough heat wicking uh, from the Raspberry Pi that unless you're doing a lot of serious number crunching, which we're intentionally not gonna do with this project, the fans will never come on. Oh, you can see there's also a remote control there. I've, um, I've uh, discovered that this Argon remote control, it's about at $11, $11.50 remote control. It works with the IR receiver that's in these cases. And so we can use this remote, con remote control to control playback with Rune. So it's kind of a nice accessory um, and somewhat accidental finding after I started using these Argon cases. Uh, so essentially we have a couple of Raspberry Pis. If you've ever done a project before with Rune, typically you have one Raspberry Pi that's connected to your network. So there's ethernet into that Raspberry Pi and then a USB connection out to a DAC. So it might kind of like, look like this uh, device here on the end. What we've done with this setup instead, uh, the, instead of this device being directly connected to your network, it's connected to this first Raspberry Pi here on the left. And then that Raspberry Pi has a connection to your home network via this pluggable USB to Ethernet adapter. So why in the world would you want to do that? Well, the folks in Japan have come up with this very clever protocol called Doretta that takes the bursty network traffic from Rune over this pluggable connection and uh, chops it up into really small datagrams that are precisely timed and evenly spaced and then sends it over a point-to-point -point connection to the second Raspberry Pi to feed the DAC. And the theory is that because the timing of the data is, is much more controlled, instead of being bursty, the CPU load on the device that's feeding your DAC is, is much more even, and as a result, uh, you get better sound. Uh, it's uh, kind of a stretch, I guess, but stay with me. I've built now about 20 of these things for different people to evaluate, and I have yet to find somebody who's actually tried it who didn't find some improvement uh, in their system. So there's something interesting going on here. I have verified that the data going through this whole protocol is bit perfect, so, uh, so there's no funny business going on as far as EQ goes or DSP or anything like that, so there's no kind of smoke and mirrors. The data is arriving in a bit perfect way, but it's the manner of delivery that uh, folks uh, who are fans of Doretta say makes the difference to sound quality. I suppose the difference, if there is any in your system, is DAC dependent, but I've had folks try this with DACs anywhere from $200 to $30,000, and, uh, and they have uh, all found some benefit in using this approach. So I've put together a pretty comprehensive guide on how to put all the stuff, uh, how to assemble all the stuff right now. It's at 
sitting at about 59 pages if you were to print it all out. Um, and in this series of videos, I'll go through most of these steps to give you some insight on how to put this together. I'm gonna to break it down into a smaller bite-sized section so that you're not watching this thing for several hours. But uh, I, uh, I hope that you'll find some benefit in it. Uh, again, it applies to Rune subscribers. So if you're still with me, presumably you have a Rune subscription um, and you wanna get better sound out of your USB DAC. There's an introduction here at the beginning that goes over kind of what, uh, what the motivations are. Um, and then there's a complete bill of materials. Uh, if we go down here to prerequisites, um, these are all links to uh, Amazon and Pie Shop in the United States. But uh, hopefully you can find from the part numbers, if you're not in the United States, uh, similar parts that you can purchase or source from your area. There are a couple of software components to this as well. This solution depends on a not free operating system called Audio Linux. It's based on Arch Linux. Uh, it costs right now $139 for a lifetime uh, support subscription or $69 for uh, just a year. Um, I think $69 is fine for evaluating. You can always upgrade to lifetime if for some reason you want to tinker with this for longer than the first year. Um, you can continue to use the solution for longer than the first year, but you won't be able to get updates or email support. Um, there's also a dependency on the Doretta software itself. I found that you can evaluate this thing for uh, pretty much an indefinite period of time, so long as you only ever send uh, 44.1 kilohertz sample rate PCM to the solution. If you want to uh, play higher resolution, uh, it'll do that for only about six minutes, and then it requires you to reset the system. Um, so they really want you to go ahead and, and <laughs> purchase the full Doretta license. Um, and currently, uh, that is done through the folks in Japan. Um, there's a Doretta website for that um, that's in the Audio Linux menus. Um, the purchase link is specific to the hardware that you have, so you can't just like go to the Doretta website and buy it directly, though you might find some things there. For the solution, you really want to wait and uh, buy the solution, the Doretta license from within Audio Linux. And the cost is, is 100 euros. So... I'm gonna stop here. The next step is going to be uh, image preparation and, um, and then we'll proceed with getting this project built.